it's Naharika with another SAT biology video. This one is probably going to be the shortest video out of the series. Today we're going to be talking about behavior. So let's get started. For our purposes, we're going to describe an instinct as a behavior that is not learned. And we're also going to describe a fixed action pattern as a stereotypical behavior that a specific stimuli will trigger for it to occur. And an example of this would be a baby bird opening its mouth to when its mom has food. Like, that's just something it'll always do. Imprinting is what happens when one organism recognizes another object as its mom after it sees its mother or potentially something else during this critical time shortly after birth. So both fixed action patterns and imprinting will occur even if the stimulus isn't the real stimulus. So even if the animal sees an object and it isn't its mom during this critical period, now it recognizes that object as its mother. So a learned behavior is different. This requires environmental interaction or interaction with other organisms. And one example of a learned behavior is habituation, which occurs when a harmful stimulus happens repeatedly and the organism just learns to ignore it. And so an example of this would just be you poking your sibling enough times and eventually they just ignore you or like your dog or an animal. <laughs> Next, we're going to talk about associative learning, and this occurs when a stimulus is mentally associated with a specific behavior. We're also going to define classical and operant conditioning. So classical conditioning is when a neutral signal will lead to a reflex. An example of this is a dog looking at its bowl of food and salivating. And now every time a bowl of food is given to the dog, a bell rings. Okay, so the bell ringing is our neutral stimulus. And now, even without food, whenever that bell rings, the dog is going to salivate. So this is when that neutral signal, the bell ringing, will lead to a reflex, which is the behavior, which is salivating in this case. Operant conditioning is when you learn something because you get a reward or a punishment from it. So these are, there are tons of examples online if you want to get into psychology, but that's the gist of it. Now, insight learning is the, in our minds, best form of learning, and this is essentially just reasoning and learning how to approach new scenarios, knowing how to deal with them. A circadian rhythm is the name for the biological clock in the organism, and it triggers them to do something regularly. So an example of this would be humans sleeping, waking up in the morning. So a pheromone is released by one member of a species, and it affects another member of the species, but the way it affects them is predictable. Like, you do it on purpose, maybe you don't do it consciously, but it's for a reason. Next, we're going to talk about tropism, which refers to a response to a particular stimulus. And we're going to talk about this mostly in plants. The three stimuli that cause turning, or this tropism, are light, gravity, and touch. So when a plant bends toward the light, it's called phototrophism. And so that's just because photo means light, and you're touching, kind of, to the light. Now, when roots grow deeper into the ground, this is known as positive gravitropism. Again, this is gravity pulling down, positive because it's going down. And when plants and leaves grow up, it's called negative gravitropism, negative because it's going against gravity. Gravitropism can also be known as geotropism, just BTW if you see that on the test. So, in regard to plants that tend to creep up walls like your vines or any other type of plant. This is known as thigmatropism, and this is when the physical touch of the plant makes it grow in that direction. So it'll grow wherever it can touch something else. Now we're going to talk about symbiosis, which is when organisms of two separate species live in the same place. The three types of symbiosis are mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. So we learned a little bit about mutualism already with the plant roots and bacteria. Mutualism occurs when both organisms benefit from association. Another example of this would be humans and the bacteria within our intestines. Parasitism is when one organism benefits and one is harmed, such as a tapeworm. And commensalism is when one organism is benefited and the other is completely neutral. It doesn't care if it's there or not. And that's pretty much all you need to know about behavior. Hopefully this was pretty short. 